Howdy, howdy, folks. Once again, this is Donnie coming at you with another Linux security report. In the last report, I told you about the so-called Samba Cry vulnerability, which allows attackers to perform remote code execution attacks against vulnerable Linux machines. Now, this is totally preventable, of course, and that's why they're saying here, patch Samba or risk the cryptocurrency mining malware. And that's exactly what's going on here. The attackers are planning this cryptocurrency mining software on vulnerable Linux servers. And the cryptocurrency mining software then is mining for the cryptocurrency and sending that cryptocurrency back to the attackers. So the Linux servers then are going into overdrive, you know, with their CPUs running flat out, trying to mine for this cryptocurrency, and the owners of those servers are not getting the benefit. The attackers are. Now, it says here that they're using the software to mine for the Monero cryptocurrency. And of course, Bitcoin is the original cryptocurrency, but Bitcoin has a few problems, as you can imagine, since it was the original, the, the, the pioneer in the cryptocurrency field, so to speak. And one of those problems, one of those deficiencies, is the fact that there are very, very long transaction times with Bitcoin. You do a some sort of a transaction with Bitcoin, whether it be a payment or whatever else, then it's going to take a long time to do, where the other cryptocurrencies are designed to be a lot faster. The other problem with Bitcoin, which is especially bad for the bad guys, is that contrary to popular belief, Bitcoin is not anonymous. So every transaction you make with Bitcoin is recorded in a ledger, which is set to a public blockchain. Anybody who wants to can download that blockchain and can read through that ledger and can actually trace payments back to certain people. Now, Monero and a few other cryptocurrencies as well are designed to be completely anonymous. If you pay for something with Monero, there's no way to trace that transaction back to any particular person. So, this is why the bad guys like Monero. Well, I shouldn't give Monero such a bad light like that. I mean, let's face it, everybody deserves privacy in their transactions or whatever, right? So Monero, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying that the bad guys are out there taking advantage of it, okay? But anyway, this is what they're mining. And uh, it gives a, an explanation there about uh, Samba being file and print sharing services between Windows and Linux machines using SMB protocol. Yeah, we already know that. We covered that last week. And it says up here, now would be a good time to install a patch released by the open source project Samba on May 25th. And security firm Rapid7 found over 100,000 Linux machines open on the internet via ports 445 and 139 that were running versions of Samba vulnerable to remote code execution. And again, as I said last time, I have no idea who is out there opening those ports to the internet. That is just totally insane. You, you don't do that, okay? But it, it continues here, there hasn't been an equivalent outbreak of ransomware using the Samba bug, but attackers began to exploit it for profit almost immediately after the patch was released According to researchers from Kaspersky Labs, instead of installing ransomware, the Samba attackers install cryptocurrency miner to turn a profit from Linux machines in the form of Monero, an alternative to Bitcoin that is less computationally demanding to mine. And what they're talking about there is the fact that Bitcoin, when it was released, the developers, whoever they are, because nobody really knows, the developers set a hard limit of 20 million Bitcoins, okay? Once you got to 20 million Bitcoins, there'd never be any more. So it's referred to as a deflationary cryptocurrency. Now, as more and more of those Bitcoins get mined and discovered, so to speak, the computations 
to discover more Bitcoins become more and more intensive. So that's why you cannot effectively mine Bitcoin by either a normal CPU or even a GPU anymore. You have to have specially designed processors in order to mine Bitcoin. But with Monero, it's a different story. Monero, you can effectively mine Monero with just a regular CPU. And if you also have mining software for a GPU, say like an AMD RX 480 or AMD RX 580, you can make it even more profitable. So in the wake of WannaCry, security researcher Caffeine discovered malware called Adelcuz that used the same SMB exploit to infect Windows machines for the purpose of mining Monero. And last week, security firm Dr. Webb uncovered what happened to be an early experiment to recruit Raspberry Pi devices into a Monero mining botnet. The Samba-led mining scheme appears to be having moderate success at generating money, although Kaspersky does not know how large the network of infected machines is. And it goes on to tell you about how much the attackers have been gaining. I'm not sure how they know that, but apparently it's a lot less you know, than what that Windows exploit has been gaining them. And nevertheless, according to Kaspersky, the Monero mining Linux botnet is growing. And initially, it was generating about one Monero per day, but by early June, it was generating about five Monero per day. So this means that the botnet of devices working for the profit of the attackers is growing. And the Samba attackers exploit the flaw to install a malicious Samba plugin that runs with super user privileges. However, the attackers must guess the path where files can be stored on the device to execute as a Samba server process. And exploit modules for the bug were appearing on Rapid7's open source Metasploit framework soon after the patch. And this location appears to be where criminals sourced the Samba exploit for the new cryptocurrency mining botnet. And that's, you know, one of the controversial things about all of these different hacker tools. I mean, you people like, you know, the, the people who develop Metasploit, you know, they have the best intentions, okay? Because these people are known as the white hat hackers, right? And their intention is to help people discover vulnerabilities in their systems before the bad guys do. Only problem is if the people who are trying to protect their systems don't do a good job of it, then the attackers can use these same tools in order to do damage. Now, as I said before, this is totally, totally preventable. All you got to do is install your updates. Just however you install your updates on your systems, the normal way, just go ahead and do it. So here we have an article from Tech Republic, how to patch Red Hat systems against Samba Cry. And the Samba Cry vulnerability has the potential to impact Red Hat Enterprise Linux versions 5 through 7. Well, Hopefully nobody's running Red Hat 5 anymore because it went out of support at the end of March, right? So if you're running a Red Hat version 5 system or CentOS 5, any derivative of Red Hat Enterprise 5, you need to upgrade like really, really fast because guess what? You're not getting this patch if you're on Red Hat 5, okay? So, uh... But if you're on Red Hat 6 or Red Hat 7 or anything derived from Red Hat, CentOS, Scientific Linux, Oracle Linux, whatever, right? These instructions here show you how to patch against the Samba Cry vulnerability. And really, it's nothing really earth shattering, anything like that. If you are a Linux administrator, you should already know how to install the patches, okay? If you don't know how to install your patches, if you don't know how to do updates on your systems, then you should not be a Linux administrator. I'm sorry. And also here, it does tell you to, on your Red Hat systems, then uh, if you have SE Linux installed, okay? And this is another thing, you know, a lot of people who do have SE Linux available to them, just disable it because they don't want to learn how to deal with it. Bad, bad idea. That's like turning up your car radio all the way so that you won't have to hear that knocking noise that's coming from your engine, all right? So you use your SE Linux. Take advantage of that because even with these different vulnerabilities, the SE Linux can, it might not stop people from breaking in, 
but a lot of times it will stop people from being able to do any damage once they are in. So, uh, so keep your SE Linux turned on. But so far as doing the updates, well, this is it. I mean, like I say, it's, it's nothing earth shattering, okay? Uh, this is the stuff you should already know if you are a Linux administrator. And so on any of your Red Hat type of operating systems, you know, do your yum update or yum upgrade. I prefer yum upgrade myself, but you might have to restart your Samba servers, your SMBD service, and, uh, you know, that's fine. But, uh, or you might have to reboot anyway, you know, if uh, you get a new kernel or something like that. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, like I say, it's nothing there that's earth shattering. If you're already a Linux administrator, you should know how to do all of this already. Of course, if you're on something other besides Red Hat, you should already know how to do that too. You know, your Ubuntu or your Debian, you know, do your apt-get update and apt-get dist upgrade. Uh, you know, if you're on Arch Linux, you know, just do your Pac-Man utility. On SUSE, do your zipper utility, whatever, right? Uh, it, it's, it's not rocket science. It's not that hard. And if you're in a large enterprise, you got maybe thousands of servers in a large enterprise, but hopefully you have a method, a methodology, a policy, written procedure for being able to make sure that all those systems stay up to date. Also, there is a manual method for patching the system against this vulnerability. If for some reason you can't update right away, not that hard either. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it here for this week's Linux security report. If you like the video, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any comments, be sure to leave them as well. And we will see you next time.